here's one of the main reasons for that. Ideally, the radiation level should be just one millisieviet per year, since this is an unreachable target for Japan. The government reportedly hopes to ensure people aren't exposed to doses of more than 20 times that. However, in some of the worst affected areas, Geiger counters show measurements of around 50 times the recommended level, and that's halfway to cancer-causing levels. RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky brings us this report from the exclusion zone. Abandoned after the nuclear accident. Walking through the deserted streets of the Fukushima exclusion zone, we can see plenty of both. Technically, we're now well within the Fukushima no-go zone. We're just 10 kilometers from the nuclear power station. These houses ravaged by the tsunami in 2011 still stand here, nowhere near to being restored. You'll be surprised to learn that radiation levels here are in fact lower than in some of the European cities. And this prompted the decision by the Japanese government to allow the people to return to their homes. But scientists say that's suicidal because radiation migrates and because it exists in hot spots scattered all across the area. In the hot spots, there is a, a huge amount of the radioactive material. It's concentrated and stored. It is almost impossible to find out all the hot spots to shut down or remove all the radioactive contaminated material from their houses. We actually stumbled upon this process. Radiated material from personal belongings to contaminated soil is put in plastic bags and buried. The radiation meter went berserk even from a considerable distance. Imagine our surprise when we found similar levels in an area which had never been included in the no-go zone. I've traveled to the Chernobyl exclusion zone more than a dozen times and this was probably the scariest episode when we put a radiation meter on the ground on a layer of moss and it produced more than 800 microrongians per hour. That is 40 times more than the normal human radiation level. Here, 60 kilometers from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The readings are certainly less than that. This is close to the average level of the ghost town of Pripyat in the Chernobyl zone. Only with one exception. The place where I'm at right now, more than 10,000 people are currently living. Mrs. Morizono is one of them. She bought a radiation meter and now patrols the area looking for hotspots. We had after-school classes for children at our house, but had to close it because of high radiation. In her short life, this girl has already got used to seeing a lot of radiation meters. Just like Mrs. Morizono, her mother joined an NGO group of ordinary women, united by fear for the future of their children and distrust of the government's actions. We're sending our data to government and TEPCO officials every day, and we get no reply. Don't see any action from them. As if they're trying to play down the scale of things. Meanwhile, our children are already suffering from thyroid issues. The voice of dissent is now intensifying, despite assurances from TEPCO as spent nuclear fuel rods are removed from Reactor 4 at Fukushima Daiichi. We have it under control. It's a challenging process, but we have the equipment to perform it. Anti-nuclear protesters in Tokyo say no one should be allowed back into the Fukushima area until it's completely safe, which in truth may not happen for centuries. Their picket has just surpassed 800 days, and they will stay longer, they say, to force their government into rethinking its nuclear policies. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Japan.